Everyone here around this area had something to do with Bonner School. If you didn't go here, your parents were here. You didn't forget Bonner. After 130 years, the Victorian Bonner Street Primary School in London's East End is being pulled down and has been replaced by a new school building. I feel very sad that the building's coming down. It holds lots of happy memories for me. Pupils and teachers from the 1950s and 70s have returned to Bonner to take a last look and reminisce about their school days. I have nothing but happy memories of the 50s at school. Michael Kelly, a pupil of Bonner in the 1950s, reflects on what education and indeed life was like in those days. This was really quite a poor area just after the war it was still rationed people were miserable mizened bitten pinched we played in the streets play on bomb sites we'd play uh, games with boars and tin cans and sticks and hoops and stuff like that no plastic in those days so no plastic toys uh, we got a bit braver we'd go over to the park and down to the canal hunt for water rats on the banks of the canal but, but teachers were, were from a different class. I mean, they came from outside of London. They were educated. They had a much broader view of the world than, than we certainly did from our sort of narrow perspective around here. They were kind of set apart somehow. Um, and I think we, we looked up to them for that. I think we had aspirations <laughs> to be a bit like them, perhaps. I see they've um, put some indoor toilets here. There seem to be three in this place here, whereas in my day, the toilets were in a block out in the uh, yard there. And I remember them freezing up in the winter too. So sometimes we couldn't go to the lavatory out there. It's all been tiled out very nicely. The ceiling's dropped. Hmm, similar to what it was. Ah, yes, this is the... Uh, reception class. This is the first class that I came to in 1950 when I was about four. Such a lovely room. The thing that struck me, I think, when we first came into this room was the size of the windows and the lightness. We lived in a very small house uh, just over the way in Mile End with quite pokey rooms and very small windows. And to come into this room with these great bright windows made such an impact on me. Interesting. In this hall, I remember weekly, we had something called Music and Movement. I think it was broadcast by the BBC. I remember in 1952 is when I was seven in this room. While we were doing that, across the uh, tannoy came the message that King George VI had died. And we stopped doing our Music and Movement and everything fell silent. I don't think we really understood what it meant, but I, I just had that recollection of that particular morning all those years ago. Ah, so we've reached the top of the school. I suppose we were about nine by the time we reached this floor. And I remember just turning up one morning and being told we're doing the 11 plus today and that's what we did. There was no coaching. I don't remember doing any practice papers or anything like that. We just sat down, filled out the forms and did it that way. Quite different to what happens today. Okay, I think this, um, this was probably the top class, so by now we're aged 11 and that's in uh, 1957, getting ready to leave school. The things have really changed quite dramatically out here, all these new flats. Even the playgrounds changed. And um, 
on Commonwealth Day, I remember walking around the playground with flags. We'd go round in circles to commemorate Commonwealth Day, I think it was. <laughs> Wouldn't do that nowadays. Hmm. Very nice room. Someone's managed to find the punishment book for Bonner Street School, which is really quite interesting. Starts in 1928 and there's a whole set of rules in the front here about how it should be administered and then it seemed to have been updated in 1952 with a different set of rules. Just flicking through there's one here in um, December 56 for a very good friend of mine Derek taking sweets from another pupil's desk it says he got two on the hand. Ah oh, truinting that seems a bit harsh to get one on the hand for truinting. Uh, using a water pistol. A filthy language for impudence with lady teacher was the was the crime and they each got four on the hand so I've no idea. Lady teacher say. Lady teacher. Not female teacher. Lady teacher. I was a school governor for many years and I mean the sort of things that children were being punished for in the 80s and 90s were far more serious than these things. I mean, these today, I mean, would, would go unnoticed on the whole. I mean, it's, you know, it's part of normal growing up, really. I mean, they're not serious. I mean, for me, it was a golden age for education. I did very well by the education system, and I have nothing but happy memories of the 50s and the 60s at school. Two brothers, Paul and Dave Clace, both spent their childhood in Bonnet in the 1960s and 70s. They arrived to meet some of their former teachers. Linda Lemmy, who taught art. Lindy Batchelor, who taught music. And Paul Davis, who taught PE. Oh my goodness That's the class. <laughs> I do remember Deborah with the baby. After a brief catch-up, the group explored the school. Oh, it's so long since I've been here. Oh, it's oh, so I familiar. Dear old playground. Look, oh, look, you can see the gherkin. And you can see Tower Bridge from up here. Just the tops. Can you? Yeah. I know. It's great, Fantastic. isn't it? I think the roof used to be the girls' playground long ago. I think right. originally it was the infant playground, actually. It was, was really, it? really yes. good one in Victorian yes. times. It's nice to get the kids in the fresh air. Oh, you know. definitely. Who was in there, then? This is Nitty Laura's room. Right, yeah. It's not called Nits anymore, it's called Head Lice. It's Head Lice. Yeah. Well, we'd all be strewn along here, going, you'd be listening for the comb, rattling in the disinfectant tin, <laughs> going one this side, one this side, she check, one on top, kicked out into the playground. Mm -hmm. But the teachers never told you, if you, even if you did have it, you got a letter home to your parents. <laughs> 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 because if they did tell you, and one of the kids heard them, God help your life in school for the next ten years. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Southampton cage. But that looked massive when I was here, doesn't it? Uh, well, it is massive, and actually, when it's up, and you're little, and one of the things you had to do is you had to go up the rope and then go over the top. That's quite daunting. Yeah. And all the children did it. Many of them were probably psychologically scarred for life, but uh, they did do it. Wonderful bits of kit. Nothing like this in schools now. <laughs> <laughs> Knotted rope. <laughs> yeah. and there was no PE kit, was there? No. They did it in their... Pants and vests. I think they did it in pants and vests. Pants and vests. And bare feet. Yeah. That could be quite a challenge in the winter. Yeah, the it was. It was shut. bloody freezing in here. <laughs> and it doubled as a dinner hall as well. It, it did. Each group of children in the school would come into this hall and perform an item to the grandparents, and we keep that up mm -hmm. to this day. But we used to ask them to come in early, and they would have a fish and chip lunch, which we got from the locality, 
and we'd sing old East End, End songs on the piano. Um, My old man says, follow yes, the band, that sort yes, of thing, yes. pack up your troubles. Yes. And uh, some of them would sing along, and then the children would um, bring some work in to show them, and then they'd show them their oh. little items, sing their song to them I or whatever. I bet those grandparents absolutely loved that. Yeah. certainly brings it all back, doesn't it, Linda? Oh, I <laughs> Look know. At, looking at that. Yes, I've loved, yeah. I have loved teaching here. Yeah. Well, I know, you know, when you were teaching, and certainly in the beginning of my career, a teacher was really respected automatically. But I don't know if that's the same, whether you could say mm -hmm. that now. I think you have to earn your respect. Yes. What, do you, what do you think? I think possibly children have more pressure on them these days. Well, so certainly with SATs. Of course, in those days, we didn't even have the national curriculum, so we would make up our own, to a certain extent, our own curriculum, yes. which was as balanced as I uh, hoped that it could be. But I don't remember mm. there being the same sort of assessments in those days. No. Yeah, so uh, it was nice to say, with uh, what I remember with Miss Lemmy, is she was the first young teacher or someone that you felt you could R relate to. Yeah, because the majority I think that we had, like the old English sort of stiff up a little bit. <laughs> and I think uh, Linda, who we see today, my, uh, with her, she'd, she'd come across ideas where we do design, we do clothes, we do um, wall paintings, like say what they've got in there. Well, murals, you, you, yeah. Murals, you, yeah. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't have that. You wouldn't get a chance of anything like that. And Miss Batchelor, the first day she came in, we are in assembly. Long blonde hair, that always. Big acoustic guitar, denim skirt, great big thick like cowboy boat things. Hello, children, big rosy cheeks, strumming away on the guitar. <laughs> the headmaster's joined in, Wilford on the piano. Got all the kids singing up and down. And she caught us from that day and captivated us. Oh, blinded. She was great, she was. Anyone's find always cowboy boots in my book. I know. <laughs> <laughs> When I heard recently that the school was being demolished, taken down, it's, it's something, being a local and a lot of people here, that we're, we're going to miss it. Do you, you know, what, what are your th thoughts and feelings about the memories of here? Well, when I visualise Bonner School, I visualise the building. Yeah, but yeah. Um, when it comes down to it, really, it's the people in it, not so much the bricks and the mortar. I think that's the good old East End for you. <laughs> <laughs> as the Victorian bricks of the old Bonner School disappear. Many local people will miss this prominent landmark. But with Bonner School moving next door, more memories will be formed by a new generation of pupils and teachers. Again, it prompts memories and things that, that have happened here. Oh, it's a lovely school, though. I absolutely love teaching us at this school. I have nothing but happy memories. That's yeah, what put top. me off milk for life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>